By 2005, the dawning of a new era in gaming was approaching. Microsoft was preparing to release its second video game console, the Xbox 360. But before there was an Xbox 360 in my home, Sony's PlayStation 2 guided my gaming hobby with a plethora of fantastic franchises spanning various genres, including racing games. Midnight Club 2, Need for Speed Underground, Gran Turismo 4, and Burnout 3 all satiated my gaming appetite when it came to racing games. The latter proved to be one of the greatest surprises for yours truly, as Burnout 3 surpassed its predecessor in almost every way by providing genuine racing action and insane stunts courtesy of the game-defining crash mode. The same year I purchased an Xbox 360, Criterion finished developing what is at this point the final entry in the Burnout franchise with Burnout Paradise. A game that was remastered and released last year on modern day consoles. Rather than let their most celebrated creation lie dormant, Three Fields Entertainment, several of the minds behind the original Burnout franchise entries, went about giving longtime fans a taste of the past. With updated graphics and the need for speed unlike anything else on the market, though the promise was there, I wondered if they could truly recapture figurative lightning in a bottle. Dangerous Driving is closer to the original two entries in the Burnout franchise with a variety of mode options including simple races, time trials, and of course road rage, where the player needs to slam, bash, and knock opponents off the track to create takedown situations. Featuring six categories based around car types including sedans, SUVs, and Formula One racers, the player has to complete all the modes in every car category, with some being incredibly difficult thanks to the rubber band AI, finicky physics, and overall technical issues both minor and major, including full game crashes during races in regards to the latter. Slowly but surely I'm making my way through the multiple modes, getting closer to the Formula 1 class that will undoubtedly be too fast for the game to handle. For those looking to complete this with a good amount of luck by their side, Players will spend 10 to even 20 hours speeding through a world too slow for the driver's lead foot. Dangerous Driving had a pretty arduous task of trying to make a burnout game without the license or a lot of money to make it feel and look better than its spiritual predecessors. The player will immediately discover that the game is rather bare bones with an old school way of progression being offered. The player starts off with a simple race inside a generic sedan that, with the attaining of a gold, silver, or bronze medal, unlocks other modes and potentially other cars in the category. The mode offerings are plentiful and varied. For every simple race or road rage event, there are modes where the player must keep their finger on the boost button to create a dangerously fast series of heat wave induced sequences. With driving on the wrong side of the road, or avoiding crashes being the only way to gain more nitrous, gamers will have to take part in Eliminator mode, where the driver in last place of each lap is eliminated. One-on-one -on -one face off battles where the player wins the loser's car, and even a Grand Prix series of three races that are too lengthy for their own good. One of the game's highlight modes is Pursuit a need for speed hot pursuit inspired offering where the player must hit their target or targets repeatedly in order to stop them. With a time limit against the player, pursuit becomes one of the most gratifying experiences in the game. One of the main reasons the other modes don't have the same level of fun attached to them as pursuit is the AI. In regular races against one or more opponents, the AI has the ability to drive with a speed unavailable to the player even when the AI is in boosting, causing moments where the AI will easily catch up and potentially pass the player without much effort. Not to mention the AI's acceleration speed is always greater than the player's even though they are using the same car. This difficulty problem is made worse by technical issues including frame rate drops and camera offerings that are either too close to the back of the vehicle or the equivalent of being placed on the end of a car's hood. Vehicular crashes are both impressive and underwhelming. Some crashes prove to be incredibly epic 
Though short-lived in presentation, even with the addition of burnouts after touch technique, where the player can slow down time and potentially create a collision scenario for a nearby opponent. Then there are other instances where the game will catapult the car, grinding near or on a guardrail, or a civilian vehicle will suddenly appear very close to the speeding player. There are also crash camera cuts that can prove to be pretty jarring for the player as an opponent crashing will have the player's vehicle still moving during the replay and when the camera returns to the player's car, the car will be in a very different spot on the track. There are two missing necessities to truly make a burnout experience no matter the name, multiplayer and crash mode. In a racing game made for outrageous moments and clutch victories, there is no way for two arcade racing gamers to play together locally or online, taking away a great amount of shine from the game's overall enjoyment. The developers promise to bring online multiplayer to the game in the near future, but lacking such a necessity in a racing game is ridiculous. The infamous crash mode associated with the older Burnout games isn't actually a part of this title, but can be attained through another Three Fields Entertainment game, Danger Zone 2. Like Crash Mode before it, Danger Zone 2 places the player in an environment where the player must crash their car in a particular zone to cause as much monetary damage as possible. Unfortunately for digital buyers, Danger Zone 2 is only packaged with a dangerous driving disc version. Meaning if digital only burnout fans want a dumbed down version of Crash Mode, they will have to shell out another $20. One of the biggest positives of almost every Burnout game is the soundtrack. With this being an independent title, the soundtrack is non-existent without counting the menu music. Players with a premium Spotify account can link their account to the game, and the player can use their own personal playlist to listen to their own personal soundtrack. With the promise of being this generation's true Burnout experience, Dangerous Driving is an example of good intentions meeting flawed execution to create something that won't revitalize the arcade racing genre. Dangerous Driving proves to be a true example of a game somewhat stuck in a formula crafted over a decade ago without the financial backing or support of a major studio to help it reach its potential. Burnout fans will enjoy what's here, but the feeling of joyous nostalgia won't last long, especially when it becomes a grind to unlock everything. Thankfully, the base game is half price with the disc version costing an extra $10. Even at that price, it feels like Dangerous Driving should be $10 to $20 cheaper in its current form. Burnout fans will get the rush of blazing through a track only a game from the franchise can offer, but the feeling is fleeting, like so many heat wave bars. 